duo is back, y'all. That <laughs> duo. <laughs> the duo. We got matching shirts because it's just cute. We got matching shirts. It's just cute. <laughs> I mean, technically, she had her spurs in it. I really liked it, so I got it. I, but... I did. <laughs> <laughs> but she let me get it even though she wore it and I she would be a shit about it. I so thank like, you so much for that. <laughs> channel a radical relationship where we are talking all things faith and all things lifestyle the duo is back y'all the duo the duo we got matching shirts because it's just cute we got matching shirts. it's just cute <laughs> i mean technically she had her spurs in it i really liked it so i got it I, but i did <laughs> <laughs> but she let me get it even though she wore it and I she would do a shit about it I so did. thank you so much for that <laughs> but yeah we've just been having so much fun with these and um I was just sitting here telling NECA about some of the feedback that I've gotten from the videos that we've done and um just how it's impacted people and you all have been, cur been encouraged to see us really just taking the time out to talk through our relationship with God and different aspects of the Bible and honestly in a way that you can relate to you know teaching in a way that can be related to so I'm super grateful to see um, just kind of the impact of that so we're back with another video um, and this video isn't necessarily one that I planned I kind of had the idea and was like, ooh, and that'll be a good one for Neka and I to talk about. Um, and it's really about how we kind of need to have this balance between, okay, I don't want to people please um, because there's a pride that comes along with that that isn't a surrender to God, but rather a surrenderance to people. Mm -hmm. But I also have to continue to recognize that I am also Christ's ambassador. So there are also things that I just can't engage in or I can't do or ways that I can't put myself out there because I do have a witness to maintain. Mm. And so I know for me, one of the things that really um, kind of sparked that was I love my generation of peeps. <laughs> you know, we've come a very long way. Um, but I think that one of the things that I see specifically amongst Christians of my generation is that, especially with all of the unrest going on in today's society, that we kind of go to the whole other extreme though. And it's like, you can't tell me what to do because it ain't a matter of sin. So I'm a do. Mm. And it's like, well, that don't necessarily please God as well. And that don't sound very humble <laughs> yeah. either. So let's talk about that a little bit. Um, I would love to hear from you as well, just about your thoughts on that and some of the things that you have observed and how you identify and how you don't identify and just what that balance looks like, even as you work out your own convictions. Yeah, I the things that I have seen, I think whenever I see something like that, I'm just like, ah. Like, or maybe I think the, the most, the most um, prevalent example for me is like, I am maybe observing someone via social media and you don't really know what they about. Like, I don't know if you really about Christ and I don't think everything needs to be like, Jesus, John so loved the world. Da, 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 da. John but like, 16 in my bio, God, I love Jesus. Christ lover. But like, I don't, I can't tell, like you don't look anything different from the world and I hate to mm. use that world the whole you know the world you know thing but right. like you don't look any different so I can't tell who team you really on and there is and we mm. are at war like don't get it twisted like as believers we know that there is a spiritual battle going on that animates all the things happening in the natural that we see whether we want to acknowledge that or not and so when I see someone I'm like man I can't really tell mm. if you rocking with Christ or not that's when it's problematic for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whew. That whole can't tell part. Can't tell. <laughs> yeah, I've had those um, 
I've had that happen where I've like had to ask that question about somebody and the person that I'm asking it of, they would be like, well, if you got to ask me, mm. there's clearly something wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like if you can't tell, like if it's not clear, yikes. Yeah. And I love the point that you make too about like, it ain't because you need to be screaming Christ on every post. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? You obnoxious or anything. Yeah, but, but similar to... Um, I liken it to like when I became a Christian, um, people that no longer interacted with me in person, like people that I went to college with, I was in Richmond, so they, they never interacted with me in person again, but they observed the change. Mm -hmm. They knew, mm -hmm. they could see. When I would talk to them, they'd be like, girl, what has happened? Mm -hmm. Because something is different, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I like that, that this isn't about saying that like, everything you do you got to make it about jesus in one way shape or form but honestly what's in you is just don't come out yeah honestly <laughs> when you are in christ yeah. everything you do does point back to him in right. a way like when you're sincerely just trying to live a life that's fully surrendered to him it can't help but point back to him because it just overflows like it's spilling out of you right and i think what i was speaking to with like when i see maybe observe people on social media or from a distance i'm just like i can't really tell I think it's problematic because I think the heart was right. Like you're trying to appease people who don't know Christ and let them know that we're welcoming and we're inviting. And I can still appreciate the things that aren't explicitly Christ in you, but God made good things. So I appreciate you. But like you so busy trying to like reckon with these people that you don't know that you're stepping further and further mm -hmm. away from Christ. So it's like you're trying to empathize with these people but like in the process you don't know that you're breaking the heart of god and so yeah yeah i like that um so i really like that because i have i have such my own battle with that in the sense of like um i'm far left in the sense that like i'm gonna stay as far away from it as i can yeah. because i ain't trying to get into myth mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. but so much so to the point that it comes off as unloving to mm -hmm. the people that i'm actually trying to meet and mm -hmm. trying to welcome because i feel so, like you're judging them maybe exactly like their lifestyle is taboo to them exactly yeah. and so i find myself needing to like come in <laughs> you know me and then you're talking about the people who are like okay I'm i can do it too and i love jesus yeah yeah so do you love jesus now because you see that i'm cool yeah and I can do it? yeah it's cool to be a christian see yeah but there's also a call to be a christian so it right. shouldn't be so comfortable all the time right exactly yeah so as you like work with that balance in your own life what what does that look like for you are you one of the people that tend to be on the other side and are trying to come to the middle or more so like i am on this side and trying to come to the middle or kind of always had the balance i would say i've always had the balance um and that's a lot of that i just Praise God, I give God all the glory for how he made me to be a person who just really doesn't care what people think. Right. Um, when I came to know Christ, it was so just like freeing because I'm like, oh snap, I know who's the final answer for me. So anything I do, you better believe I have wrestled with God about it. Mm. I don't do anything flippantly. I don't just go yeah. out kicking it and doing whatever if I have not considered the text, if I have not considered how this may please or displease the Lord. Right. Um, and because I know that about myself, I'm just really cool with the balance I got. And there's going to mm -hmm. be people with stronger convictions or weaker convictions where I'm in the middle. I'm just like, I can spot this. That ain't right. And mm -hmm. I can articulate it to you why. Or maybe I, I think the beautiful thing is knowing how to express um, why you believe what you believe. Mm -hmm. Developing convictions isn't just like, oh, I'm going to have this kind of behavior, but you need to also know how to articulate why you believe mm -hmm. this is how it is, this is how you give your best to Christ. Mm -hmm. um, and have text really to support good. it. Yeah. yeah, and it's a wrestle. It takes time, and it's, um, but it takes intentionality. And I think that um, the people who are maybe on this end where I think that it looks too chill, like it looked like you're just kind of doing whatever, and then the, they're the people who I don't think have wrestled enough at all. Mm -hmm. And then the people over here where they want to stay too far away from it, a lot of times they've taken like um, church, church standards and norms from their right. church and made it biblical doctrine. So there's also a lack of wrestle over there in a way too. Mm -hmm. And so there needs to, the, the middle is where you, like what yeah. I'm talking about, where you really are just like at the foot of the cross with Christ what is good what's yeah. pleasing to you yeah i like that i think that um 
one of the one of the ways that for me personally i've um seen myself kind of try to migrate more towards the middle is willing to be in an uncomfortable situation mm. for the benefit of somebody else mm. you know like not just like i'm gonna be in here because this is kind of really what i want to be doing mm -hmm. but the reverse of that is expecting the person that you're trying to reach to always come into your stuff to mm -hmm. always be in your circle to always be at your church when that can make them uncomfortable too yeah. it's clear that they're not living a life to christ and so it can be so easy for us to ask other people to get uncomfortable yeah and then us be unwilling to be uncomfortable by yeah. penetrating their circles that's good so for me i feel like the conviction that i'm working towards is that like i can be mindful of the situation that i'm going into and then be intentional once i'm there Come on. because what it also does is create opportunity because once you offer me something that I don't want, or once you propose we do something that I'm not cool with, like, then that gives me the opportunity mm -hmm. to say, you know, you know what? what, I actually don't do that because X, Y, Z. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, and granted, like we can talk about what I believe all day long outside of an uncomfortable context, but the reality is that like, but you also see me living out my truth and living this thing out in the same environment that mm -hmm. you're placed in, and it don't have to look for me what it looked like for you. Nope. And I think that I've just seen that be much more impactful than just like, hey, come to my church mm -hmm. and do this thing with the people that I feel really comfortable around mm -hmm. in hopes that that'll change you. Um, and I think it's Paul who says, like, I've learned to be all things to all people. Come on. <laughs> to these people, I've become this. And to these Come people. And on. not because I'm sacrificing convictions and I, you know, need to reshape who I am in every single situation. But I think that he learned that balance. I can be here and be firm in my conviction with intention. I mean, it's the in the world, but not of the world thing. Exactly. And that's really the standard of a believer. Right. Um, and that's. And I love that you even said that, like the words of Paul, because like to some people, you are going to be the only bit of Christ they ever really need. Mm -hmm. And what is it going to feel like if you never even meet them in their world? And like I said, all things to all men, you know, in right. the world, but not of it. But like there is a, a bit of humility, I think, that believers need to um, kind of mm. take on um, to meet people and grow with people. Um, but not to like the detriment of like your your convictions and like pleasing God or like that you're falling into sin where the over here I'm going to use this like where I think they're kind of like all in in a way that's just not right good yeah um yeah so um this wasn't planned so it may be you may have to give it some thought but I wanted to ask you what do you feel like those what do you feel like that healthy conversation looks like when two people disagree so if i am observing something in somebody else that i'm like oh i feel like you're too far to one of these sides and you know i wanted to have that conversation with somebody and in the midst of that conversation we just don't agree you know like i bring it up they don't see it my way or they're not there you know like, what does humility on both sides look like because we are dealing with things that aren't necessarily black and white I think humility looks like starting and ending with prayer. Mm. I would, I really think it'd be just really dope if you saw something that maybe pricks you a wrong way and I come to have a conversation with you and I'm like, yo, Shell, I want to talk to you about something, but I want you to know that where I'm meeting you with this is from a really sincere and kind and Christ-like place. Can we pray about before mm. we enter into this conversation? Yeah. And then if the conversation goes and we still are just like on two different sides of the road, man, thank you for talking to me, bro. Like, right. I, ain't gonna, I ain't gonna hold you up. I still am just like, that ain't where I'm at with it. But yeah. can we pray again? I want to open this up and seal this with Christ. Right. Um, because that's why we're doing this. We both love Christ. That's why we're having the conversation. So prayer, I think, is really yeah. a dope way. And I don't know if I've ever experienced a conversation like that where it opened up and ended with prayer. Me either. Like starting one, initiating a conversation like mm -hmm. that where I've done that. That's really and good. boy, with that, I'm, I would imagine how much that would just suck. Because prayer just like... No, it just <laughs> right, loosens it just you up. Lowers the defenses. It's like, oh, the Holy right. Spirit up in here, so you can't cut up. Right. You know, exactly. like we move and how we need to move. So yeah. I think that. No, I love that. I love that too. And I think also, even from personal experience, kind of checking my heart to see, am I going in this because I'm trying to convince them mm. that they're in sin? Yeah, yeah. Ooh. 
is that really my motivation mm. that I'm really just going in there to help them to see what I see? Mm. You know, I saw this thing and I really need you to understand mm -hmm. why that's as not, opposed yeah. to truly being curious. And that's actually um, something that my counselor mentioned to me as I was telling her that I was trying to find this balance. She said, hey, Shell, make um, curiosity your goal, not accusations. Mm. <clears throat> Be curious, not accusatory. Come on. And I was like, Oh, yeah. So if I thing. go in curious, <laughs> I'm being like Jesus and then I'm asking questions for you to help me understand. Mm -hmm. Not just I've already made up my mind about what the truth is mm -hmm. and what's right. Mm -hmm. So let me present this to you yeah. in hopes that you'll also see and correct your mm -hmm. behavior. We and good? you'll thank me at the end. We good? You're Wait, welcome. You still don't agree? Oh, Sinner. wow. You're proud. <laughs> <laughs> you are very proud. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> but and I Put think, him on the cross. Right. And that's problematic because I, I think I was even like having a little bit of an internal dialogue with myself earlier about how convictions evolve. Mm. Um and they can like progress and regress. Like there are some things that you are real tight fisted about because you're just like, I'm fresh out the world. Right. That's gonna trip me up, so I gotta no right. way but, and then, then you get older and you're like I can let that go and there's some stuff that you came out like oh that's not a big deal and then the longer you out here swimming you like yo I gotta <laughs> reel that back in right. you know what I mean so like <laughs> right. I think that is also like that curiosity and that that humility of coming and like really believing that like who I was two years ago mm -hmm. who I'm gonna be in five years right there's only a handful of convictions I, I, I probably will carry like convictions, right. the gray area, not yeah. the black and white. That's the sin and the not the sin. <laughs> right. Convictions, I'm a right. carry until I like meet Jesus. Like, yeah. And that's that open, you know, I'm always going to talk about like there's so much in this walk with Christ that we have to be like open handed about. But there's things that we need to be close fisted about. And that's the gospel. And mm -hmm. then the gospel talks about the humility, seeking wise counsel, right. understanding that what's sin for you may not be sin for others. So there's a lot of wrestling and things that you have to do in this so it's not like you're just open-handed and doing nothing with it right. there's a lot of things to like figure out in the process right yeah yeah i love that because it's it's kind of like um also affording people the grace to evolve <laughs> affording people the grace that like okay they're where they're at right now. I'm yeah. going to stay prayerful that if what I see is accurate and this is problematic, that the Holy Spirit is going to do his part to reveal those things and keep this person protected from the consequences in the meantime. Wow. Not just hope that they get the wrath of mm -hmm. the things that they're doing. Or I can so tell that, them they're wrong. Or I can teach like, them something. Yeah. We love exactly. to teach people. I love to teach people. You see it. <laughs> exactly. That girl loves studying right. something out and telling somebody about hey, it. Hey, hey, let me, hey, hello, hello. Can you know, in the text, it? the ancient Hebrew, <laughs> this word meant. Right. So for you, it means. Right, exactly. <laughs> okay, so we've touched on just kind of a little bit of, um, you know, that some of our generation and some of the younger generation behind us. Um, but I also wanted to touch a little bit on how the older generation can meet us where we're at because I'm sure that they see a lot of things that they yeah. feel are problematic in our character. Yeah. And so, like, let's talk about being on the other end of, okay, perhaps there's some things from me, from us, that somebody else could be looking at and saying, mm, they ain't got it yet. You know, what are ways that you can approach that are beneficial and we can talk specifically because we do have those kinds of examples so in the context of modesty mm. we had the situation with the posting of swimsuits mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um and so of course i even think that i'd like sent a text message before that maybe said like hey do we feel good about mm -hmm. posting this you or asked, something you like asked that. If we're okay with posting this yeah and so i think even as we were kind of like trying to dial that back a little bit there were multiple things that were just like Mm, the way that you even approach this situation wasn't going to be helpful to begin with because of XYZ. Mm -hmm. But had you done one, two, three, I could have at least heard you different. Now I got to fight to hear you regardless yeah. because humility. But in retrospect, these are some things that would have been helpful. So if we can just go back to that specific situation and mm -hmm. kind of speak broadly about that 
for you, not even the person who posted the picture, I was, but you were in the picture. Um, so therefore, like guilty by association. <laughs> <laughs> and that and standpoint, like point, what was it like for you to be automatically placed in the bucket of like, uh, hello, you're not being modest right now? Mm. It was very minimal.